Welcome, my friends, to a new episode of Connect Your Speech. Well, in this episode, uh, we're going to talk also about assimilation, but we're going to talk about another tendency related to assimilation in English language. And this tendency is the T plus Y sound. Now, in this tendency, when the T sound comes at the end of a word, and then it meets the Y sound at the beginning of another word, what happens is that the Y sound changes into a Sh sound. How does this happen? Let's first talk about the T sound. Actually, the T sound is a voiceless sound. And when I say that it is a voiceless sound, it means that the vocal cords don't vibrate. And if you want to know exactly what I mean by this, you can compare the T sound to the D sound and try to touch this area with your two fingers and pronounce the two sound. You will notice that there is a kind of vibration in the D sound, but it's not there with the T sound. Now, the T sound is an alveolar sound. And when I say that it is an alveolar sound, it means that your tongue goes to the back of your upper teeth, this area. So say it, t, t, t. You will see that your tongue goes to the back of your upper teeth. And this part is called the teeth ridge, the alveolar ridge. Now, the t sound is also a plosive sound. That's how we pronounce it. And what does a plosive sound mean? A plosive sound is a sound that requires a full stop in order to pronounce it. Like, look at this. I'm going to stop the air coming out from my lungs to pronounce the T sound. So I'm going to say T, T. So what did I do? I stopped the air and then I released it. That's a plosive sound. We call it a plosive sound because uh, there is a kind of a plosion when you're pronouncing it. Now, the yes sound, as we talked in the previous episode, is actually a voiced sound. The vocal cords move. It is also a palatal sound. It comes from the palate. And it is an approximant sound. And as we said um, in the previous episode of uh, Connect Your Speech, we said that approximants are those sounds between fricatives and vowels. Now, we said that in this tendency, when these two sounds meet, what happens? The yes sound changes into a sh sound. And again, as we mentioned in the previous episode, the sh sound is a voiceless sound. And this voiceless sound comes from an area that we call the post-alveolar area. And this post-alveolar area is actually between the alveolar ridge and the palate. And it is actually a fricative sound. How? Because look, you say, shh. That's a friction. That's why we call it a fricative sound. Now, let me give you some um, examples. And a very famous example is got to you. And when you put them together, in connected to speech and pronounce them quickly, they become gotcha. Gotcha. Let's listen to some examples. Let's go to an American speaker and see how they would say got you in connected to speech. Let's see that. But the other thing they did was when they got you there. Oh, look, it says got you there, got you there, got you there. Now, another example from a British speaker. She was looking at me and it was like, I've got you, I'm watching you, oh, there's a power. I got you, ha <laughs> ha. Right, now, 
an Australian speaker. Like your manager must be an amazing guy. He got you into the chart in 10 days, He's right? great. He got you into the chart. He got you, he got you, he got you. Now, another example. So, got you, that was a good example. Another one, don't you, which is actually don't you in disconnected speech, but in connected speech, don't you will be don't you. Let's see an American speaker. Oh, I think it, it absolutely proves their case, don't you? Oh, <laughs> Hillary Clinton. She's saying, don't you? <laughs> which, which shows you that um, these tendencies are even used by the best speakers of English language, like even politicians use them, right? Now, let's move to a British speaker. And it seems that um, a couple are fighting. Don't you dare tell me to calm down. Don't you dare. Don't you dare. Okay, um, that's a wife threatening her husband, obviously. Right, good. Now let's move to an Australian speaker and let's listen carefully. Why don't you uh, get in touch with Dr. King? She wants to talk to you about... Why don't you get in touch? Lovely. Ha ha ha. Now, another example, which is want you. Want you. Put them together. Want you. Want you. Want you. Same tendency. An American speaker. Let's listen to it. Now, I don't want you to get the impression that the blockchain is... I don't want you to get the impression. Ha ha ha. Right. Now, let's go to a British speaker. This is what I want you to remember and what I want you to know. What I want you to remember, what I want you to know. Let's move to an Australian prime minister. Ha ha ha. Let's listen to that. I want you to know I'm optimistic about what can be done. Who? Oh. I want you to know I'm optimistic about what can be done. Now look at my friends. The man wants you to know that he's optimistic. Can't you see that? Or can't you? Yeah, but can't you see that? Okay, um, thank you so much for watching this episode. I hope you enjoyed it and see you again in another episode of Connect Your Speech. Bye-bye.